Greece is a vast labyrinth of towering hills and steep gorges. For an entire century, scientists have been puzzling over how a single river could carve such a deep chasm. It's so enormous that one can see it from space. Being 445 kilometers long, nine kilometers wide, and over one and a half kilometers deep, this is the deepest gorge on Earth. The Colorado River has unveiled two billion years of our planet's history. It has been flowing here for five million years, eroding one geological layer after another. The first humans set foot here several thousand years ago. For Native Americans, this land is sacred. For centuries, they have revered the canyon as a place of immense power and spiritual significance. The more scientists explore this fascinating place, the more enigmatic it becomes. This is the Grand Canyon, and in this video, you'll find out how has an entire billion years of our planet's geological history got wiped away? Is there something wrong with the Colorado River? And could it dry up? How people planned to use the Grand Canyon's caves as fallout shelters? What incredible people have lived here for hundreds of years? And what unknown monster has been frightening them for generations on end? Today, we'll embark on a journey through the Grand Canyon and try to answer these questions ourselves. The Grand Canyon for most lakes. Given that the Earth is approximately 4.5 billion years old, it turns out that you can study 40% of its history in the Grand Canyon alone. This is huge because rocks can tell us almost everything. They encapsulate insights about the atmosphere, water, and living creatures that have been sealed for billions of years. All you need to know is how to extract and interpret this information from the stones. Fortunately, geologists know how to do this today, but their work often remains undeservedly overlooked. Just consider for a moment that some of the most crucial specialists studying Mars are not rocket engineers. They are geologists who can accurately identify, for example, when and where Mars had water using only rock patterns and satellite analysis. Imagine the research potential they have on Earth, where there are tons of rocks that can be physically examined. One such enthusiastic geologist was John Wesley Powell. In 1869, he embarked on an expedition to the Grand Canyon to touch the planet's history by deeply exploring stone strata. The canyon captivated Powell so much that he named it the Library of the Gods 
in recognition of the knowledge this gigantic formation provides. However, there was an issue with Powell's initial calculations. While camped at a cliffside, he calculated that given the age of the Earth and the oldest rock at the bottom, the cliff should stand three kilometers tall. But in reality, it was only one and a half. What was wrong? Could there be an error in his calculations? Well, no, the calculations were correct. But what turned out to be wrong were the sedimentary rocks themselves that were simply missing, although they should have been there. Powell named the problem the Great Unconformity. Unconformity because the older rocks were lying at the bottom and much younger ones on top with nothing in between and the great because the middle was missing rocks representing almost a third of Earth's history. Where did they go? In the century and a half since Powell's time, our understanding has evolved and we now have more precise data. The oldest rock samples John examined were indeed almost 2 billion years old. The younger ones were roughly 500 to 550 million years old but they lay on top of one another with nothing in between. There are no intermediary layers in the Grand Canyon. Scientists can't simply seem to find an intermediate layer that is a billion years old or say 900 million years old. They are only super old followed by super young layers. Similar unconformities have been discovered in the canyon where rock strata representing 175, 500, and even 725 million years were missing. But unconformities don't end here. Another scientist, James Hutton, had observed a similar phenomenon a century prior to Powell at Sakar Point in Scotland. However, he established the period and the scale of the problem differently. The same pattern as in the Grand Canyon was observed at Frenchman Mountain east of Las Vegas. There, rocks aged 1.7 billion years rest peacefully with stones that are 520 million years old. Similarly, the middle layer is missing. Tourists can even go on a special route to look at the very place where a quarter of the Earth's history has simply vanished. Stephen Marshak, a professor at the University of Illinois, states that such unconformities are found everywhere on Earth. The Grand Canyon just happens to be a unique place where the fault literally presented this mystery to astonished scientists right before their eyes. For example, one would need to drill several kilometers deep to reach layers of comparable age in Europe. But Stephen is 100% sure that if we were to drill so deep anywhere in the world, we would encounter exactly the same thing. Rocks with an age difference of over a billion years lying on top of each other. According to the geologist, this is a global issue that warrants more attention due to its potential existential implications. However, it's not as though scientists completely forgot about this mystery. There are quite robust hypotheses explaining the causes of this planetary scale oddity. They are linked to global glaciation, continental movement, and even the temporary disappearance of the Earth's magnetic field. But so far, none of the hypotheses has gained enough weight to be deemed definitive. The mystery remains a mystery. And this is just the beginning of our journey into the fascinating world of the Grand Canyon. Our exploration of the Grand Canyon would be incomplete without a closer look at the Colorado River, a remarkable natural feature that partially formed the canyon. However, this unique river is now under real threat. But let's take it one step at a time. The name Colorado originates from the Spanish word Colorado. As one might easily guess, the word used to mean colored, but this usage is deemed outdated today. The term now primarily refers to vibrant red color. This is all due to the red sandstone silt that covered the river basin. 
causing the river to have a reddish hue throughout its history. This changed in 1963 with the construction of the Glen Canyon Dam, which blocked the red silt, altering the river's appearance. The river is 2,330 kilometers long and is on average about 90 meters wide. The narrowest part of the river lies 217 kilometers from the mouth, where it's just 23 meters wide. The river runs through seven states, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, Wyoming, California, and Nevada. Its journey begins in the Rocky Mountains, with its source situated at an altitude exceeding 2,700 meters. From there, it flows southwest to Lake Mead, and then into Mexico. The depth of the river varies greatly, ranging from 2 to 30 meters. Its winding course, flow characteristics, and incredibly beautiful cliffs attract a lot of rafting enthusiasts and other thrill-seekers. The river is home to three species of endangered fish, the humpback chub, the bony tail chub, and the razorback sucker. They are under strict state protection, and conservation efforts are underway to restore the populations and save them from extinction. The Colorado River also sustains vast natural areas. Eleven national parks are located along the river's banks. Despite the seemingly desert terrain, there's plenty of wildlife. Mule deer, moose, bighorn sheep, lynx, cougars, coyotes, and beavers. Numerous bird species also thrive along its length. of the Grand Canyon and another amazing wonder created here by Mother Nature. A hidden and truly fascinating world lies deep beneath the rugged terrain. This is the caverns of the Grand Canyon. These astonishing subterranean formations not only preserve evidence of the planet's geological history, 
but also hold astonishing prehistoric artifacts and even echoes of significant historical events from relatively recent years. This geological marvel was created over millions of years. Water erosion wore down limestone formations, resulting in a vast labyrinth about 70 meters deep. The confirmed length of the cave network is about 100 kilometers, but its actual length remains a mystery. It's one of the largest dry cave systems in the world, and by some estimates, the largest. The nearly constant temperature of 14 degrees Celsius and the low humidity of about 2% make the caverns an optimal environment for ecosystem preservation. The discovery of this amazing place is associated with an intriguing story. The caves were accidentally discovered in 1927 by a young woodcutter named Walter Peck. While heading out to play poker with friends, he accidentally fell into a cavity. This must be a gold mine, he thought. The next day, Walter decided to explore the cave a little and discovered shiny yellow veins in the rock. Surely it must be gold. Believing it was gold, he promptly purchased the land in hopes of becoming rich overnight, but got greatly disappointed. When the test results came back, it turned out to be nothing more than fool's gold or pyrite with iron oxide. Walter spent all his money on buying the land and was left with nothing. Therefore, he opened the caverns to tourists to make ends meet. At first, the entrance was at the place of Walter's initial discovery, where narrow wooden stairs were built to the bottom of the cavern. In 1962, an elevator was installed on the other side of the cave, which delivered tourists to a depth of 70 meters in under a minute. The old entrance was bricked up. Once, something astonishing was discovered here, the skeleton of a rare species of an extinct animal, a gigantic sloth. This creature was immense, measuring four to five meters in length and weighing over a ton. Indeed, this was a fearsome creature. It turned out to be a female. Apparently, the poor sloth fell into the cavern, just like Walter, and couldn't get out. The skeleton was handed over to scientists, and a taxidermy replica was placed at the site of discovery. In the explored part of the cavern, a large grotto has been repurposed into a quaint restaurant a venue for wedding ceremonies, and even a luxury suite for two. Since the cave has almost constant temperature and humidity all year round, this natural climate control contributed to a very interesting event. During the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, the U.S. government designated such caves as natural bunkers in case of nuclear war and the destruction of official shelters. These caverns served as one of such natural bunkers. They were designed to accommodate 2,000 people who could stay here for several months. It's amazing that the food that was brought into the caves almost 60 years ago is still reportedly preserved, presumably due to the aforementioned climatic conditions. Therefore, no one has removed the strategic reserve from here yet, and the caverns seem to remain on standby for strategic use. Marveling at the beauty of the Grand Canyon, one should not forget that these places have served as a home for people for hundreds of years, the indigenous peoples of North America. The Havasupai people are a Native American tribe whose ancestral lands are located right here in the southwestern region of the U.S. They lived for centuries in a remote and stunningly beautiful side branch of the Grand Canyon. The Havasupai have a rich history deeply intertwined with the Grand Canyon region. Their indigenous presence in this area dates back over 800 years, and evidence of their settlements can be found throughout the canyon. Traditionally, the Havasupai were a semi-nomadic tribe, moving between the canyon floor and the plateaus above to fully utilize the diverse resources available to them. One of the remarkable features of the modern Havasupai tribe is their location. 
This is one of the most remote and inaccessible Native American reservations in the United States, reachable only on foot, by horse or helicopter. Although such isolation stems from the tragic history of indigenous oppression, it has also allowed the tribe to preserve its unique culture and traditions. The capital of the Havasupai Reservation is the town of Supai, and it is still home to about 400 members of the tribe. The Havasupai people have a deep spiritual connection to their ancestral lands. The name Havasubaaja translates as people of the blue-green waters, reflecting the stunning turquoise waterfalls and streams that flow through the canyon. These natural wonders, such as the breathtaking Havasu and Muni Falls, form an integral part of the cultural and religious practice of the Havasupai. The Havasupai tribe has long been recognized as the guardians of the Grand Canyon. Their knowledge of the land, plants, and wildlife is invaluable to researchers and conservationists working in this region. The tribe actively takes part in environmental efforts striving to protect their ancestors' lands and maintain the delicate balance of the canyon's ecosystem. These efforts are crucial to ensure that humanity does not lose this amazing piece of original culture. In fact, many similar cultures are already irreversibly lost, with only their remnants left behind. At least it's fortunate that these relics are carefully protected. We are also about to explore one such location. On a stretch of Desert View Drive on Arizona Highway 64, five kilometers west of Desert View Tower, there's a remarkable place, a sort of time capsule that captures the daily life of the ancient Pueblo, a group of indigenous people from the Southwest US. It was found about 800 years ago. The National Park Service, NPS, recognizes this place as one of Arizona's most important archaeological sites. The section consists of a small U-shaped pueblo with a living area, storage rooms, and a kiva. A kiva is a special room used by this people for rituals and gatherings, many of which are associated with the unique Kachina belief system. Members of the Gila Pueblo Archaeological Organization from Globe, Arizona, first excavated the site in 1930. Conservation work was performed in 1948 and 1965. In 1974, the site was included in the National Register. And now, it's a popular tourist attraction in the Grand Canyon area. When arriving here, tourists often experience some profound emotions. Picture yourself standing amidst the vast expanse of the Arizona desert, surrounded by the remnants of a primitive, yet unique, and in its own way, fascinating civilization. Imagine walking in the footsteps of the Pueblo ancestors who inhabited this region over 800 years ago. The Tuzayan ruins would easily take you to a bygone era when these ancestors called this arid landscape their home. Although much remains unknown about the daily life of the Pueblo ancestors, the Tuzayan ruins offer many clues. Archaeologists have found pottery shards, tools, and even remnants of ancient hearths, shedding light on their cultural customs and lifestyle. The Tuzayan ruins also testify to the ancient Pueblo being in harmony with nature. They built their homes in alcoves and caves, using natural rock formations as the foundation for their dwellings. This unity with the environment shows their remarkable ability to live harmoniously with the harsh beauty of the Southwest. These archaeological wonders hold a rich tapestry of stories and mysteries, serving as a fascinating portal to the past. Therefore, a visit to the Tuzayan ruins should be high on your must-see list. The experience of stepping back in time would give you a new appreciation for the complex mosaic of human history. There are even more astounding phenomena in the Grand Canyon that go beyond the realm of science, but we simply can't ignore them. After all, the Loch Ness Monster was also taken quite seriously for some time. 
So, a mysterious creature has long been rumored to live deep within the primordial wilderness of the southwest U.S., where the landscape itself is intertwined with legends. For centuries on end, it has been terrifying locals and, of course, piqued the interest of modern cryptozoologists. The enigmatic Mugion Monster. Legend has it that the Mugion Monster, named after the Mugion Rim area in Arizona, is a tall, bipedal, ape-like creature up to eight feet tall, covered in shaggy fur ranging from dark brown to reddish hues. Eyewitnesses describe its glowing eyes, piercing the night with an eerie luminescence. Well, by eyewitnesses we mean those who claim to have seen the creature. Indeed, tales of the Mugion monster have been passed down for many generations. They originate in the folklore of Native Americans. Tribes such as the Apache and Navajo told stories of a powerful, elusive creature that roams the deep forests and canyons, blending seamlessly into the environment, being a true master of stealth. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence suggesting the Mugion monster exists is the discovery of huge footprints resembling the tracks of a massive primate. Cryptozoologists scrupulously studied and measured these tracks, finding astounding footprints of up to 24 inches long. These impressive tracks left many people in awe and sparked debates about the true nature of the monster. Fortunately or unfortunately, the scientific community is somewhat skeptical about the authenticity of these prints. There is a large number of eyewitnesses who didn't see the monster, but claim to have heard it. Those who have been fortunate enough to hear it report chilling cries at night, something between a human scream and the cry of a wild animal. Of course, the existence of the monster is fittingly shrouded in a haze of legends and conjectures, backed up by no real evidence. Otherwise, it would have been a global sensation. But whether it is a figment of imagination or indeed an undiscovered creature, the muggy own monster has already become a landmark of these places, and it rightfully earned its place in the pantheon of cryptozoology alongside the Yeti, the Loch Ness Monster, the Chupacabra, and other similar characters. But you, dear viewers, if you find yourself in the wild places of the Southwest, keep your eyes and ears wide open. Who knows, maybe you'll be lucky enough to personally verify that these legends are true. Though perhaps it would be better if you didn't. As we say goodbye to the captivating realm of the Grand Canyon, we conclude our expedition into the heart of the mysterious Southwest. It will always remind us that the world still holds wonderful secrets, and these secrets will sooner or later be unearthed by curious daredevils who will finally find answers to all the questions.